welcome to a Traveling Knitter podcast. This is chapter 28. I'm your host, Steph. I don't know why I needed to fling my, my scarf. This is a podcast about knitting, reeling for the most part, and I am your host, Steph, coming up to you from Dayton, Ohio on Saturday, October 6th. I have my window open. I'm actually in my bedroom today. I have six be bedrooms. I have six windows in my bedroom. So in the spring and summer, I get a lot of daylight and I wake up with the sun, which is super helpful because I am absolutely someone who wakes up with light. Um, so the winter, yeah, I can tell it's it's staying dark. But anyway, so yeah, uh, this is the corner. I'm not gonna spin you around, but basically this is one window and then that's the start of another window. I decided to do the podcast in my bedroom today because of a thing called the readathon that I am doing that I'll talk about at the end. Um, but for now, let's just jump into what I've been making. So for completed quests, alas, there is nothing, but that's okay. So we'll just move into current quests. And for those of you who aren't aware, or aren't paying attention or whatever, uh, quests is just, it means whips, works in progress. But I thought that I would just be a little, a little different, a little cool. Cool in quotes. Um, so we'll talk about my sweater, Willow, which is in this project bag by Daisy Girl and Company. I've gushed about it multiple times, but I love it. And I also did find the fabric for it. So I haven't made a ton of progress on it. Just a couple more repeats on the back. So I have done, so the last time you saw this, I had only done one lace repeat. Oh, there we go. One lace, blah, blah. One lace repeat. I have now done a total of three. So Willow is a sweater by Pam Allen and it is in a book for Quince and Quo. I forget what it's called, but it's all patterns knit in Owl, which is uh, one of their lines of yarn. And I found something that I thought was quite comparable, which is Vista. Do I have a ball tag? No. That's okay. It's in Vista, which is Mountaintop Yarn by Classic Elite Yarns in a neutral color. It's like a, a neutral gray. Very nice. So I'm just plugging along with this. Um, I definitely think the next time I podcast, I will have gotten the back done. So this is what I brought to Knit Night and worked on that for a bit. And it's knit in the round, so for the most part the body is done. I just gotta finish up the back and then pick up the front and repeat that and then pick up for the sleeves. Next thing are my socks. So clearly I just don't knit very fast on socks and that's okay, um, but I have knit quite a bit. So I am heels done, which was done before and I have knit more on the foot of the sock. So I would say I'm I'm getting I'm getting close. I feel like most people's heel heels socks are like the same length their leg and their toe. So that's it right there. Um I'm probably going to have to try it on to judge and see how much further to go. But there there you have it. I don't have a good sock recipe. I'm currently knitting on size ones. I don't know if I should be knitting on size zeros because I find that my gauge is loose, but my cast on cuff is just always tight. Um, so yeah, 
I've been wearing my socks a little bit more and they are they are all so loose. I wear them with boots so that at least like they stay but if I wear them around the house they literally will fall off my feet. Um, so I just I need to knit them smaller but I guess so my my feet I have like a I have a size seven and a half foot but my calves are very large like they're not they're not big they're just big for the size foot that I have uh -huh. so yeah I just need to work on that again it's in this Tom's bag which honestly is not that good for a project bag because my needles constantly poke through this thin woven fabric. It reminds me, if you're a cross stitcher, it's like linen, you could absolutely cross stitch on this. Not that I'm going to. And here's the cake. Or ball, since I didn't cake it up. And then the last thing, which I did make the most project, project, most progress on is in this bag that I made. And it is the Asunder Shawl by Lisa Much. So there it is. I've got maybe an inch or two to go before I switch to the other color. So Oh, I didn't even tell you the yarn from the sock. It's opal. <laughs> um, color 62, I, I got it wrong last time. 9312, and it says like sport pilot on it, so I don't know what that is. Uh, this is Primrose Yarn Co. in her Adelaide single in the charcoal and glitter which I said before, I freaking love it. I love it so much. I think it's beautiful. Um, so that's the body and then the complementary color is this guy, which is a Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light in the Juniper colorway. So Asunder um, has drop stitches. Are they drop? They're very open areas and that's what's going to be in the green. And this is the front because I have that earring on it so I've actually been using it as progress keeper so if I did it right hopefully I can't remember if I moved it last time or not but supposedly that's where I was. For needles I'm using Knitter's Pride Royale. It's an interchangeable set that I have. I enjoy it. It's not my favorite because it's not very pointy. I have come to find that I really like pointy needles. And that's really all I've been working on. The, the same three projects that you saw two weeks ago. Now for On the Horizon, I do have something in mind. And I printed it out because I was testing out my printer and um, I need to get black ink but this is Camp Wilkinson by Caitlin Hunter and this is actually so this is the shape there we go and you get a sheet of paper I think you get two but um, you can color it and figure out how how you want your pattern to look which I appreciate I have not picked my yarn out I have not picked my colors but I cannot wait to go stash diving and pick something out. So this is what the shawl's shape is. It's kind of like an arrow. The colors that she chose were blue, white, a darker brown maybe, and then a yellow. It's hard to tell with this because there's no black offsetting it. Um, but it has a garter band, stockinette, I thought there's a lace. Yeah, there's an eyelet section. Yep, so you're just garter stitch, stockinette, and then an eyelet. And that's what makes up this arrow shawl. Which I think will wear really nicely. The next 
section of the podcast is Smaug's Trove, which I do have something and I planned to get it and I used money that I had got. I finished the Luna Lion Hat and uh, so some of the money from that went directly towards purchasing the new Lena magazine. So I purchased the sec the third and the fourth from a yarn shop in Indianapolis and I spent $24 each. My local yarn store sold it for 32. So I did not, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, like 24, $26, $32. So I'll be honest, I'm probably going to look elsewhere uh, the next time one of these comes out because 32 is a little steep for a, a book magazine because you and okay I know like you may disagree and that's totally fine um, but for me I feel like $32 is a lot of money for a magazine that only has 12 12 projects in it and the I mean the photos are beautiful I love like the photos for the advertisements I love that but that's kind of crazy for me to pay money to see ads I don't know I feel like knit, the knitting the crafting community is a little bit different and that we would pay money to see ads but um yeah 32 dollars I thought that was kind of steep uh, I did not ask how much it was. I just said, I would like to purchase it. Could you place it on hold? And then I went and picked it up. And I mean, 32 plus tax, mind you. Oh, well. So, um, yep, this is issue six. And you've got, it came with this insert. I don't know if there was like a misprint or something, but this is the charts for one of the sweaters. And again maybe unpopular opinion but I feel like sometimes the pictures in the magazine while beautiful are make it kind of hard to see the project like this this one Vav it's a pattern by Esther Romo and this is the only this is the picture you get so the yarn is dark. It's like a dark reddish purple. It might be Brooklyn Tweed. I'm not sure. I don't know. Does, do they use Brooklyn Tweed in this book? But either way, it says page 120. Here we go. Oh, it is Brooklyn Tweed. <laughs> uh, so it used four skeins of Kawari by Brooklyn Tweed in the hematite colorway. It's hard to tell what that was. It's a scarf. There's your schematics right there. I mean, looking at it, I can tell it's a scarf, but you really don't get a lot from the picture. So, I love getting these books. They also smell interesting. Um, they're, they smell strong of printing. Um, but sometimes I have to go on Ravelry or Instagram to see the pictures a little bit better because uh, these pictures are not always the clearest. I do appreciate the schematics though in front of each. So in case you haven't seen it, there is a sweater called Sideways, or it's a cardigan. There's this cardigan called Sideways by Hoki Locatelli um, that's full of cables, which is really nice. It's the first thing. And then you have a shawl by Shannon Cook called Elfrida? El Elfrida? I'm not sure which I really like I like the shawl the shawl is really nice um, there you go so that's the shawl I think I like the color I'm partial to the color too oh it's and it's a uh, Cumbria by the fiber company and then there's whoo yeah um what is this a Swedish Finnish it's not an English word it is h-r-y-g-g-i-r -G -G Riga is that how you pronounce it? Riga? oh uh, where's my phone well either way that's my guess um, and it is by Helena Magnusson 
And it is quite an interesting sweater. It's I saw this online or on Instagram and it looks like it's got mohair in it. So it Icelandic lamb's wool, lamb's wool, hafra beige, natural brown, and then more lamb's wool. I don't know, maybe lamb's wool's got that halo effect to it. It looks like it's lace weight. One ply. 246 yards per 25 grams. Yeah, that's lace weight. Here's a picture. If that's not blurry. Um, socks, Andrea Maori, Viner or Viner or Vinnave? I don't know. This is a struggle. Wait, did I skip something? Oh, I did. Selenite, which is a, oops, sorry, cardigan by Annie Rowden, which does not close. And when I look at the schematics, I'm not so into it. But then when I look at the pictures, I am into it. There's like a shoulder detail. The socks, they're hard to see because again, it's a dark color with a dark background. So the, those are the socks by Andrea Mowry. I think that might be the first thing I make out of this book. Um, after that, we've got a sweater called Arbusto by Rosa Pomar, which reminds me of another sweater by Caitlin Hunter. So, and it's because it's got the bobbles. Now it's definitely not the same sweater. It just has the similar bobble effect to it. And it might even be in the same color, but it's not the same sweater. And then we have Vav, the, the, um, well, not then, sorry. We have a shawl called Tortoise Shell, which, pretty interesting. Right there. I hate to say it, but it kind of, it looks like your typical lace style shawl. Um, I'm sure it looks beautiful though. Typical, not in like a bad way, but a very classic, again, a classic is, is a better word for it. Then we have a sweater called Poet, which I really like this. There's a good picture of it. I really like that one. That might be my favorite sweater that's in here. After that, we've got a big lace chart for that sweater and another lace chart. Vav, the, um, I wanted to say blanket, the scarf. Then we have Sud, Soda, Sud. I'm gonna say Sud which is a beautiful, beautiful cardigan. Here's a black and white picture, which you can really see the this detail right here. I really like that. The model is wearing a blue version of it, or the sample is blue. Then we have a sweater called Virginia, and it looks like it's just a simple sweater. I don't know if they used, did they use two yarns? No. So this is five skeins of a DK weight yarn and it just did this like striping effect. I'm not that excited about the sweater, but I'm not like opposed to it. And then this one, this is my second favorite thing in here. This is called The After Party by Astrid Trolland, which is a colorwork yoke sweater. And I love that it's just in this gray and off-white, white, light gray. Who knows? I think it's gray. It's always hard to tell. 
And I believe that is the last thing. Yep, that's the last thing in here. So those are all the patterns, and you, you could have seen them on Ravelry too, but and that is Lena Magazine. And I looked it up online how to pronounce this. It is Lena. At least that's how the French lady told me it was pronounced. The last segment of the podcast is called A Novel Idea. Well, the last, like, structured one. And that is where I talk about a book, where I give a book recommendation. So for this podcast, or this episode, I'm going to pull it up here on... Oh, cool. It's got to update. Before we talk about the book, take a little sip of my tea. It's been a while since the castle made an appearance, uh, but this is... Oh, that is the back of the castle. There's the front. Still one of my favorite mugs that I have gotten from Disney. And I got this one from Disney World. And uh, like I said, it's uh, Cinderella's castle. Sleeping or Aurora's castle is the one that's at Disneyland. The tea that I'm drinking is a raspberry coconut tea that I got in Germany. It's good. You first taste the raspberry and then the last note is the coconut. So the book I want to talk about today or recommend today is called Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. Uh, so this is the cover and I read this at the beginning of the year. Um, I'll just hold it up. I read this in March and the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because I just finished another book or her her latest book um, which what is it called a piece of the world so a piece of the world was good um, it wasn't it was good, but it made it reminded me of this book, which is her first book that I read, which I I gave five out of five stars. I thought it's amazing, and it's pretty short. It's maybe three hundred pages, maybe not even. Um, but there were some similarities between the two books. But basically, Orphan Train is it starts off in modern day, and you have an eighteen year old girl, or she's about to turn eighteen. Um, and she's about to be out of the foster care process. I believe it's foster care. But she's she doesn't have a family and she she's struggling with her identity and her life in general. And she's about to lose the only home life that she has. Um, and, you know, she's... she's She's a little rough around the edges and she is uh, tasked with helping a neighbor clean out her attic and organize. And this lady, which is her neighbor, um, in turn basically kind of shares her life story with, with the teenager. And the reason why it's called the orphan train is because back in the day, in America, which I honestly had no idea about, um, there was this orphan program where, I feel like New York is where this one took place, but orphans were put into a program where they got on a train and were taken, I don't, like, what's the, what's the verb for that? It's not driven. Ridden? They were chugged. They were chugged west and um, a family would adopt them and sometimes these children weren't even orphans. Um, so she is with this family and she tells about her life and I will say this is not a happy book. It's really sad and it's so moving, touching. There's a bit of a love story in it. I won't say more, but I I recommend it so much. It's it's really good. The book that I just read was similar in that 
it was bouncing back and forth between um, like two time frames. Now it wasn't present day, I believe it was, what was it? Was it the 50s to, either way, it wasn't present day, but it was bouncing back and forth between the main character's childhood and then the main character's adult years. Um, so it was okay, but it also had that same the same level of, not the same level, oh, like the same stream of sadness and that you just felt, you, you felt so sad for the main character in both of these books. Um, so again, Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. It, so it's 278 pages paperback and it came out in 2013. Okay, so that's that's the podcast. The The next little bit is just um, slice of life stuff or life as I see it as I've titled it. There's not big, not much been going on these last two weeks. Um, doesn't it look very fall? Like I've got my, one of my cowls. I really, really love these scarves. They're cowls though, or Oh, there went my headband. As the fashion industry calls them, infinity scarves. I'm not a fan of that term, infinity scarf. So yeah, this is my lovely cowl. It looks really fall in here because I've got my plaid dress on. It's 80, it's not fall. <laughs> it's pretty warm, so I'm gonna take that off. Also drinking hot tea is not cooling me down. Um, but the biggest thing that's happening in my life right now is the readathon. So I had a readathon in March, and we're doing one again uh, in the month of October. Only this time there are two more people involved. So I've got all of my close friends joining, and we basically see who can read the most pages in a month. And this time around, I thought that it would be really cute if we hand me bookmarks and then exchange them so that we all can all get book new bookmarks and then we're going to do kind of like a second place but it's going to be a different category and we haven't decided on that category yet so I think maybe we'll just make it be random. So with it being the sixth I have read um, just over a thousand pages so far this month and we include books, textbooks, audiobooks, manga, um, graphic novels, comics, if you can read it, we count it. Um, we didn't, we don't count magazines, like I'm not going to count that I read Lena magazine, but. So if you want to join, I will let you know at the end of my podcasts where, where I'm at. Um, currently I'm in second place. I know, right? Over a thousand pages and I'm in second place. So, um, just, it's just a great way to read and I love reading. I love knitting, but reading is my first passion. So reading is definitely always going to be something I do. I think knitting will always be there, but there's just something about reading. So, Yep, I've been reading. Um, I've got two giant hunks of fantasy books that I'm currently in, and then I'm also currently reading The Dark is Rising, um, which is a kids fantasy series which I talked about in a previous episode. So that's what I've been doing, and that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this weekend, um, apart from cleaning the apartment. Uh, other than that, I started a new journal which I brought over way back. I did a know your needle work tag thing um, because I do also cross stitch and cross stitchers like to do a lot of tags. So does booktube, the knitting community, not so much. At least I don't see it happen very often. Um, but in that tag, I mentioned that I write in a journal and I have written in a journal since I think I was nine 
9 or 11. I know I had one going when I was 11, but I feel like I started it when I was 9. So, looking back now, I, I've been writing in a journal for almost 20 years. And it's kind of cool to go back and see the things that I was doing and, and saying and um, sometimes my friends and I will be talking about something where we can't remember when we did something I'm like well I probably wrote about it so I can look it up just give me a minute because I'm gonna have to because I always I put in the, the start and end dates normally on the cover um, so that I know when I open it what part of my life is this um, but anyway this is my new journal this is a diddle journal um so there's diddle there's whoop that's diddle that's diddleina and then the back is just this and it is like glittery and then the inside is just the typical standard grid sheets of paper so i don't know if i've mentioned this but when i was in first grade i was obsessed with this this mouse character it was a very very popular like I don't know. He was just, he was popular. It's kind of like Hello Kitty or he's a popular character. I don't think he had a TV show. I don't know. I don't know if he even had books, but you like collected pieces of paper that was, had diddle on it. Um, but anyway, I got this journal a long time ago and I just really want to use it now. Don't know how many pages it is and it'll be interesting to write a journal on a grid. I also really want to start drawing again in my journals. I used to do that. Um, for every journal entry, I would just draw something. And I drew some really weird stuff. Like, I drew a bunch of disco stuff on one of the pages. I liked to draw clothes. Like, I liked to draw the outfit I was wearing that day. Yeah, some things never change. I do like clothes. All right. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. All of my contact information should be at the beginning. Um, I also will answer any comment you have down there, or you can always private message me. Um, though I don't know why you would, because I don't know. Um, oh, we hit 150 subscribers this week. So thank you so much for all of you lovely people who want to watch me consistently or just accidentally hit the subscribe button. I know I've done that before. Thank you so much and um, I will see you guys in the next chapter. Bye!